What's up, everybody? My name is Shannon, and I am still waiting for my Seder. And today, we are talking about Defy the Night by Bridget Kimmerer. So for those of you who don't know, this is the same author who did the Curse So Dark and Lonely trilogy, which I loved that trilogy. It is so good. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. So I was really excited when I saw that she was going to be starting a new series. And this is still a fantasy series, but it's not quite in the same realm that uh, Curse of Dark and Lonely was in. Like in this one, we do have some like electricity and like I like the borders and the politics. Like there's a lot more going on with it. Um, we are in a kingdom that is basically being ravaged by a plague. And what's interesting is that in her acknowledgments, she mentions that she got the idea for the story in 2019. Um, the pandemic happened and she was really worried that everybody was going to be like, is this just a pandemic book? If you read it, it's not. Um, you can draw some parallels to the pandemic and everything like that. And she said that it did influence some of the ways that she wrote about like how this like pandemic was being dealt with, but it's, it's not based off of COVID. So if you're wanting to escape COVID and all of that, you're not really going to see any kind of like real tangible parallels in this book, but it's a fever that really only has one known cure. And one of our main characters, Tessa is teaming up with somebody named Wes and they have been sneaking in, trying to steal more of these petals so they can distribute it back out into the population because the crown is not really doing doing as much help as they think they could be doing. Uh, the prices for this medicine is so incredibly expensive. People can't seem to get a hold of it. And so a lot of people really hate the king and his brother because they believe that they are just really cruel and not helping their people. Now, on the flip side of this, our other main character, Prince Korik, um, he is the king's brother. He's the king's justice. He's the one who meets out all of the punishments. He was my favorite character by far. Like out of this entire book, Prince Korik is absolutely outstanding. I don't want to draw too many parallels with Curse of Dark and Lonely, but he reminds me a lot of Grey. He's kind of like if you combined Rin and Grey into one character, and I really loved exploring every facet of him. He is so, so interesting. There's so much going on to him. And when his and Tessa's worlds collide, you really see all of the ramifications of that. And you see how Tessa has to deal with her world being a little bit more complicated than she thought it was. So I am giving this book a B plus, and that's because I'm not a huge fan of the main trope in this book. I think that it could have been executed in a little bit of a different way, and it still would have had the same outcome. Because as it was, I was kind of expecting it, but then when we got to it, I found myself really trying to reconcile. I'm like, wait, I don't really think that this fits quite the way that it was supposed to, and I'm really trying hard to like dance around it and not say what it is. But overall, like I still really enjoyed the story because where like this author truly shines is with her characters, it's with her moral grayness, it's with her complexities, because this is a story that is very complex because it's not black and white. Like, like, the king is not just some cruel king that is like hoarding all of this medicine and not allowing his people to have it. Like he's dealing with supply issues. He's dealing with conniving like politics and all of that. And I love that this story like really explores that. It really shows that like it's not cut and dry. Like there is so much more going on and it's up to our main character Tessa to kind of navigate and figure out where she's going to fit into this world now that her eyes have been opened. I am really looking forward to seeing what else the series is going to bring from us. I really love how it leaves off and I really like that with the relationships, I think we're setting up kind of how we had it in her other trilogy in that, yes, we do have, you know, like our characters coming together, a wonderful love story, blah, blah, blah. But you can tell that like there's more to be said. Like these characters don't just come together because they are the protagonists and they're supposed to fall in love. They fall in love because they really do see something in each other. They feel very three-dimensional and I love that. Like you can tell that there's going to be more conversations. There is more story to be had from them and you don't always get that in YA books. But where I really do love Korik, Tessa was a little bit annoying. She's very emotional. She cries a lot. But the fact that she wears her emotions on her sleeve does play a lot into the story, and I really did enjoy that. So overall, Defy the Night, I would recommend it. I think it was really good. It's not my favorite from like Bridget. I do think, you know, like Curse of Dark and Lonely like was very, very good. 
but I really love this world that she's built up and I do think that as the series goes on it's gonna get better so I am really excited to see where it goes next and I hope you guys give this book a look but anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video if you liked it be sure to like button down below and don't get to subscribe to top books with me every week that is everything got for you today and I will see you guys next time bye